Well, I, I thought we beat a, a good team tonight. I thought we, you know, beat a team that's very difficult to scout as well as defend. Uh, you know, this style of play, as I, I talked to their coach, you know, I really did like this style of play when we were scouting them because it's such a unique system. Five guys that can shoot the basketball, but all five guys can get to the basket and make plays as well. And I think that showed tonight. And then they play, you know, like their coach did. They, they, they never quit. They play every possession. And uh, I, thought they, I thought they did a really good job. Now, I thought our guys, you know, when we built the lead, we have to learn how to sustain it and build on it. I thought, you know, we made some mistakes during that time and they were able to cut our lead. But when they, when they cut the three, I thought our guys have done what they've done all season long and that's they've responded. They made the plays they need to make to, to build the lead back up again. And uh, they played with a lot of poise down the stretch and it gave us a chance to win the game. Coach, yeah. I know you said you, you liked how, you know, how Tennessee Tech played, um, just kind of the matchup that it presented. Um, what do you hope your, your team learned from a game like this, especially with how it, it, things got tight there in the second half? Well, that, 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 this is college basketball. You know, games are going to be very competitive. They're going to be hotly contested, and that's what you've seen happen again. And the thing I keep learning from our guys is basically, you know, having poise down the stretch of close ball games. I think we've shown an ability down the stretch to make the right play, to get stops that we need to be successful. And uh, we have to continue to grow in that area. You know, we can improve in a lot of things, and we can improve in that as well. But, but I do like our guys' as poise, you know, right now coming down the stretch of games. They've shown the ability to, you know, catch, the, gather themselves, focus in, and make the plays they need to make. Coach, you kind of talked about Tennessee Tech kind of cutting into that league. Going into the end of the second, they kind of went on a 15-3 to three run. Defensively, what do you want to see tweaked going into the tournament next week? Well, we have to be better defensively from the standpoint of uh, guarding teams that have a number of threats on the perimeter. And uh, this team was like that, but a lot of teams are like that in today's college game. So we have to be able to defend the three-point line better than we defended it tonight. We have to identify in that the shooters. That's knowing personnel better to make sure the guys are the prolific three-point shooters aren't getting a lot of shots. And tonight, we didn't do that. We gave three-point shots to guys that were in the scouting report as guys that we knew were going to look for those shots and hunt them the most. And uh, we have to do a better job of IDing those players and taking them off of that line. Uh, after starting the season one of 11, Debo was incredibly efficient tonight. Uh, what have you seen from his growth early on? Well, I thought Debo was terrific. I thought he gave us a huge lift, especially in the first half. But the entire game was his leadership. You know, he's a senior. He's a veteran. Uh, he's already accomplished in college. You know, he's been, you know, good, you know, all of his years for the most part. And so uh, I thought he provided that for us. He, he provides maturity. Uh, he, he is a great body. He can play multiple positions for us. And, uh, and I knew the shots would eventually start to fall for him because, you know, throughout his career, he's, he shot the ball, you know, well from behind the arc. But, you know, he got off to a slow start this year. And, and so I was waiting for uh, the percentage to start to change. And uh, I was happy to see him knock him down tonight. Darius Johnson hit the 1,000-point mark in his career tonight. What does he mean to this program? Uh, he means a great deal to our program from the standpoint. He's been a part of some really good moments, and uh, he's leading us again this year. You know, I think, you know, for Darius, I look at a young man that's a four-year player in one program. <laughs> it's probably, it's probably pretty rare nowadays, and that's just the, way tr the nature of our sport now. But, uh, so to have a guy that's been with you for four years, that – that, that does a lot for us because he understands exactly what I want. He's been in so many, you know, key moments for us. So having that type of experience, that type of extension of your coach is uh, very, very important, especially when you have 11 new players on your roster. So uh, him understanding that and relaying that message to the players, what I want, has been, been huge for us. And he scored, of course, 1,000 points. And for me, when you score 1,000 points, like I said earlier, it's not about you. It's about your teammates and everybody around you. Uh, you, don't, you don't achieve that type of you know, milestone without the personnel. This isn't tennis. It's not golf. So you know, it's not an individual sport. So you know, I think he'll reflect on all the guys that he's played with over the years. I know I did when I was reach, reaching my marks. And uh, I'm sure he'll do the same in just the fond memories and moments that he'll think about uh, from what his teammates were able to provide for him as well. Keyshawn has talked about adapting to a new environment. He leads the team in points, rebounds, and assists tonight. Where can where is his ceiling? Uh, you know, Keyshawn's still developing in our system. I don't I don't think Keyshawn 
is where he's going to be as the season progresses. I, I can still see where he can grow his game, you know, in our system. And he's just, like I said, he's just learning. He's four games into what we do. He's had a different system. He had different, he's had multiple different coaches. And I'm, I'm at least his third new coach in college. So, I mean, it's th those are the challenges that we face now and trying to speed up that learning curve, you know, with these players in, in your system. I think as he continues to you get more comfortable in our system, I think he's going to even do better for us. It's just a function of getting more games under his belt, continuing to understand exactly what we want by watching tape and what we do in practice. You mentioned earlier how the team was able to, to build the lead back up after it got back down to three. What, is, what does it say about this team's maturity to – to kind of hold the hold the line there, you know, you obviously don't want to be in that situation. You want to extend that lead, lead, but what does it say about this team's maturity to, to answer that run back and, and finish the game? Well, they definitely showed showed a great deal of maturity and, like I said, poise. Because you have to be poised and calm in those situations. A lot of times, when you have a younger team, they kind of can lose themselves, and and that that can it can go the other way. These guys to have a calmness about them, they have the poise, and that's why they were able to kind of turn it around during that time. Now, for us, we don't want to keep being in those situations. We have to find a way to build and sustain these leads. That's something that we have to do in, in what we're watching film on and teaching our guys, like how do you build on a lead? How do you sustain a lead? And uh, that's where our growth is going to be. So as mature as they've been, you know, closing games, coming down the stretch, making the right play, we have to be better throughout the game of when we're getting leads to kind of continue to build on them. And that's, that's another facet that we have to learn with this group. Coach, uh, first of all, congratu congratulations on the win. But it's a small sample size. But in the Big 12, three of the guys, um, there are three guys on your team that are in the top 10 in scoring, which says a lot about your offense. What have you kind of put into practice to cater to the, you know, the amazing transition offense and half-court offense that you guys have carried out this season? Well, we wanted to take a hard look at everything that we did in the off season, And that's one of the things we wanted to try to build on. We wanted to you know, play with a better pace. We wanted to, you know, p install a new system for the team that we were building this year with the players we had coming in, and I think we're able to do that. You know, I think we've been able to to build a system that complements these guys. Uh, I think a pace that's that's better suited to the depth that we have on this team, and and I think our guys are just again they're getting more and more comfortable with what we want in our in our system, and then I think Coach Adam Hood, you know, who we brought in as a, as a coach, an assistant coach for us. You know, he does a very good job of that from the standpoint of what we wanted. So we knew defensively we defended. That's kind of our, you know, trademark here. We've defended, you know, every year. But we wanted to combine that with, with you know, a more high-octane offense to try to, you know, change, you know, our look and how we play. And we're getting there. I'm not, I'm not saying we're completely there yet, but, but I can see where we are making strides in that direction. Johnny, you guys obviously beefed up your non-conference schedule to prepare for year two in the Big 12. What do you hope to gain out of this weekend's tournament, you know, with, with playing against Wisconsin, possibly LSU and Pitt? What do you hope to get from these games that maybe will help you guys as you move towards the conference charm? Well, again, to prepare ourselves for, for our conference, we need to have games that's going to reflect the type of opponents we're going to face on a nightly basis. And I thought playing in the Green Bar event would be great because, you know, all those teams are accomplished. All of them are very good. And, uh, and like I said, they have terrific coaches. So we're going to be in a position where we're going to you know, face some tough challenges. Uh, of course, I'm only looking at one team, and that's Wisconsin. That's all we're concerned about. And, and we'll start preparing for them this evening. But you know, it gives us an opportunity to kind of see you know, where we are and what we have to do going forward. And so to me, I look at all these as opportunities. And so this is another great opportunity for us to continue to grow as a team. In, in football, there's always been offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators. I know Adam Hood, who you just referenced, he was offensive coordinator, maybe was his title at his previous stop. Just what kind of fingerprints has he put on this? I know you just kind of alluded to it a moment ago, but what specifically has Adam Hood brought to, to your offense to kind of help change things up this year? Well, one thing is, is our pace. You know, we plan, you know, a higher possession game. You know, we were longer defensive possessions where we played and maybe a few longer offensive possessions. So our, our possessions are a little shorter. Our pace and transition, we've picked that up. So we, we're faster in transition. And we, have more, and we have more movement, more ball movement and body movement. So those will be the things that probably have been more adjustments from what we did is the ball and body movement, ball movement and body movement, as well as our pace have been the areas. Uh, I think we did some good things spacing and we did some other things, good things identifying players and attacking them. But we've combined that now with what we're doing. And I think that's been, it's been good for this group. 
touching back on Darius's 1,000-point uh, uh, milestone, I talked to Coach Jim Fitzgerald from Episcopal about Darius's time in high school, and he noted his work ethic was one of the big things about him. When, he, uh, when Darius came to UCF, do you, do you kind of expect him to hit this 1,000-point mark and become the 21st Knight to do it? Uh, I definitely expected him to be able to do this. So to me, it's not really a surprise that he was able to hit the 1,000-point mark because I'd watched him play since elementary school. So he's always been able to put the ball in the basket. And so the thing that I want him to learn is put it in the basket and also run and lead your team. And so that's the thing that I've been enjoying, watching him grow into his role as, as a lead guard, you know, being calm, you know, showing poise, you know, making timely plays. And I think that's what you've seen, especially over the last several years as he started to mature in our program. You're seeing him grow in those areas. And he's becoming a, he's become a very good, very good point guard. I mean, I wouldn't trade him for any point guard anywhere. I mean, I think he does a great job for what we do in our system and who we have. And uh, I'm glad he's on our team. You guys have started 4-0 with the home crowd behind you, uh, but now you go to neutral territory to face a top 25 opponent. What kind of test will this be for the team? Oh, this will be a great test for us. You know, like you said, going to a neutral site, you know, playing playing Wisconsin, you know, an, an opponent that's uh, that's very very talented out of the Big Ten. So looking forward to it, you know. But this this is opportunities for our guys to grow, to get better. You're only gonna get better through these experiences, and we're gonna learn more about our team, like we learned about our team tonight. You know, we're always learning. And so we're going to learn about us in that type of environment, in that type of neutral setting now, and see where we are. But the main thing is we take out of it is we have to bring who we are to that arena. You know, we have to bring our competitiveness. We have to bring our passion and our desire to, to be successful. And that's what we're going to try to bring up there is, is that mindset. You, you said you've been watching Darius since he was in elementary school. I'm trying to do the math. I'm not sure if you were still at Duke at that point or maybe at Stanford. But was do you kind of remember – when you, you saw – maybe he was in middle school or early high school where you knew, like, this is a guy, wherever I'm coaching, he's going to have it. I know there was the, the family connection as well, but when did you remember watching Darius and really saying this guy's going to be a college star? It probably in middle school is when I saw him play and, and I saw – you know, because he's playing against, you know, an AAU competition against all guys in his age group. And I thought he's one of the better guards, you know, when I watched him play. And so that continued through high school. He's still one of the better guards. So – it wasn't hard to see, you know, like, you know what, if I have an opportunity, you know, I would love to be able to coach him. And, uh, you know, fortunately it worked out. Coach, you guys were a plus 22 in a second chance points today. Was that something that you put an emphasis on coming into today's game? No, we did. You know, we thought one of our advantages was our size and our length. And uh, we had to take advantage of that because, you know, they were playing, you know, we always say styles makes fights. And so, their style is playing small ball and spacing the floor, penetrating and pitching and kicking out the shooters. So our style is we play bigger, we play longer. And so we have to be able to have our style, you know, take advantage of our strengths. Now they were trying to take advantage of their strengths. And our, one of our strengths was, you know, on the offensive boards. We, we, had to, we had to have that type of a number on the offensive board to offset some of the things that they could do offensively on their end. So, and we emphasize it, and I'm glad to see our guys, you know, respond. Coach, today you went up against, uh, you just mentioned it, but a much smaller team than you guys. Is that something you kind of look forward to or uh, something that stands out to you before you send out your roster? No, absolutely. You want to you wanna face all different types of opponents because in conference play, you're going to face different styles again. And you have to have seen those different styles in order to be successful. Some teams are going to play small ball. Some teams are going to play big. And you have to be able to find a way in each one of those situations to be successful. And this gives us a, a snippet of what we have to do. So we'll be able to, to watch film. We'll be able to talk to our players and practice things that will help us playing an opponent like this based on what we just saw. Because we're going to see it again by some team. I can't say, wish I haven't watched any of the teams play yet. But I'm sure somebody's playing smaller. And when that happens, we have to be prepared. Notice Mikey Williams out of the boot. When do you expect to work him into game action? Uh, he's still day-to-day. -day. He's out of the boot, but he's not practiced or anything. So he's still day-to-day -day getting himself back. But it's good to see that's encouraging to see he's, he's, you know, he's responding, he's improving. And so we'll just you know, continue to work with him until he feels comfortable enough to be able to get back out there. But I'm happy to see he is you know, trending in the right direction. What about Jalen? Update on Jalen. Same thing with Jalen. Jalen is still day-to-day -day as well. You know, he's, he's, you know, I think he's improving, but you know, it's still day-to-day, -day and we'll see – you know, as time, you know, time will tell with him in, in this situation. But he's in a good place. Uh, he understands where he is. And we just have to continue to give him time and let him continue to try to heal. Uh, that, 
You got, you got it. Thank you, guys. Um, you know, he was, he was a bit disappointed. Uh, you know, we had multiple chances, you know, to increase the lead. At one point, I think it was either 17 or 20. Um, and we let him back in the game. Uh, we said before the game that they're a very dangerous team because they can shoot the three ball. So we didn't do a great job of covering that this game. And Darius, I know it's a team game, but you get a thousand career points tonight in Milwaukee. You get the fifth all time in NBA history in two years. So what does those achievements mean to you? Uh, you know, it means a lot. You know, accolades like that is hard to do nowadays. You know, with the transfer portal, a lot of people don't stay at one school for four years. So, you know, to be able to leave my mark on the program and in school history is, is something big. Um, you know, that was one of the least things in my worry. You know, something I've always been able to do was score the ball. Um, you know, my teammates, they find me open for threes. Um, you know, I try to get them involved as much as possible. So, you know, my outcome was honestly just to win. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't really care about the points too much. You know, some nice is going to go in, some nice is not. So, we just got to be able to come out and compete. Um, really, nothing, just excited to be out there. I was just playing hard, that's all I could do. And luckily, the ball was going in the basket for me today. You guys have started 4-0 oh with this home crowd behind you tonight. You guys have been in full territory to face a top 25 opponent. Uh, what kind of test will this be for the team? Um, it's obviously going to be a big test. You know, it's not something that we're, we're new to. Um, obviously, we opened up with a, a top 25 opponent. Uh, and we're just looking to go one and no. You know, our coaches are going to do a, a great job with the scout. And, you know, we're going to watch the film and execute and learn from this game and see what we have to work on. Obviously a closer game, like you said, than you guys wanted. What do you guys want to work on defensively looking forward to the tournament as you do face that bigger competition? Definitely got to uh, work on not fouling. You know, they got to the bonus, um, I believe, at like the 11-minute mark, 12-minute mark they got to the bonus. So. I think Wisconsin's a pretty good team at that. So, you know, going into this this next game, we have to work on not guarding guarding without fouling and just no threes. You know, once again, that's something we struggle with just this game and the past few games. So, DB, you obviously had the hot hand, you know, offensively. What do you see your role being on the team this year? Like, what what are what are you known for? Uh, really just bringing experience and then knocking down shots when I'm open. Um, but other than that, really just defending, doing doing a lot of stuff that don't show up in the scorebook. Darius, do you guys think you've played your best game yet, or do you think not full game? Close. Not even close. Um, defensively, I think we've had some great games this year. Um, you know, offensively, we had some pretty decent games, but we haven't had a game where we, you know, hung our hats on defense and we were able to execute offensively and play like we want to play. You guys shot it well from the perimeter against FAU and then 39% from beyond the arc tonight. Do you think you're starting to find some consistency with the deep ball? Yeah, uh, one thing we have on this team, we have a lot of guys who can shoot the ball and a lot of guys who can score. Uh, obviously, we have guys coming back off an of injury, you know, so we're still building the chemistry and continuity together. But it's just a matter of time before we start putting all these pieces into place and completing our puzzle. Debo, I, I know you guys are upset maybe about giving up the lead, but to, to kind of bat, be, beat back that, that run and, and re-extend it out, what does it say about this team and their ability to get in the paint, kind of scrum and get, and get, those, get those points to, to stay in the lead and, and pull out the win? I feel like we're real resilient. Like, we've been in a lot of situations. So, like, like we work on the stuff, like, everyday late game situations. So, like, we, we're prepared for, like, different runs. Like, obviously, teams going to go on runs. Like, we want to prevent that. But if it happens, like, we're prepared. Both of you guys have played a lot of minutes at the college level. What do you – what's your message to Mustafa, who may have struggled tonight, but obviously has a big future ahead of him? Next. Next play, we when, when we broke down, when we broke broke the huddle in the locker room. Next play, that's all. He young, so like he gonna bounce back. We not worried. Like Mustafa, he got a lot of potential. He's a great kid. So next play for him. How do you guys, on a, as a team, want to capitalize on more of those second chance opportunities regarding rebounds? Uh, I feel like we do a a pretty good job of that. You know, that was one of our emphasis going to this game. You know, offensive rebounding and. It's something that we want to do every night. Um, but I feel like some of those opportunities that we have, uh, we try to force it up sometimes when we've got guys on the perimeter who can shoot the ball very well. Um, we just look for those kick out. You know, those, those are daggers when you get offensive rebounds and you kick them out for guys that can shoot. That hurts opponents. And when you can just start doing that and doing that and putting those together, 
it, was, it would create a huge deficit in the game. Darius, I know at times in your career, you know, the team has looked to you to be one of the primary scorers. You can still do it, obviously. I know tonight you didn't, you know, you had the thousand point, but only scored six. But how how comfortable is it out there knowing that you got so many great scorers around you that it doesn't all have to be on your shoulders? Uh, it just makes my job easier. You know, I have a lot of guys who can also score from the perimeter, you know. Last year was a little bit more packed in the paint. Now I can kind of get into the paint, distribute, and trust my guys to make open shots. And, you know, once they start doing that, you know, defense is going to start leaning there more, and then I can just find my own rhythm and find my own shots. You guys had almost double Tennessee Tech's rebounds. What did you guys practice kind of before the game to lead up to that? Uh, I don't really think it was anything that we practiced. Uh, we knew that they were a little bit smaller, so we tried to take advantage of that. And, you know, we got 22 offensive rebounds, which is probably a season high right now for us. And we just want to keep building on that. Uh, we know that, you know, they were small, so we want to take advantage of it. And then kind of follow-up question on that. I would see particularly you, DJ, kind of get switched up on one of their bigger guys despite them being a smaller team. Kind of in your mind, how do you handle that mismatch, especially knowing one of your big guys might be covering somebody that they're typically not going to be covering? Um, me personally, I like guarding the big guys because I get a chance to be more physical. You know, it's kind of hard to be, you know, physical with guards your size throughout the game. But, you know, the refs, the refs let the smaller guards bump with the bigs. But, um, you know, with the bigs guarding the perimeter, it's had to use their length. Like for Mustafa, for example, he's 7'2", long arms, a super long wingspan. So, you know, we just had to talk to him as his teammates, you know, tell him to trust his help. And we got to tell him where, he, where we want him to send the ball. Tennessee Tech was able to go out on that 15 to three run late, but you guys withstood it. What was the message from coach like in the huddle to keep you guys together? Um, we just had to, uh, you know, keep our composure. You know, the three ball, <laughs> three ball is a dangerous thing. You cut a lead down in a blink of an eye. So, you know, they, they hit a few threes uh, and it, it brought the lead down. You know, as a team, we, we have to be better you know, building a lead. You know, we can't get complacent, you know, let, let people come back and get open shots. So that's something we're going to learn and watch film on. So what do you guys think it needs to uh, needs to happen this weekend to have success uh, in this Greenbrier tip-off? Uh, we got a mentality. We go every game one and zero. So that's that's what we're going into. Um, not when twelve o'clock hit tonight. We putting this win behind us and we getting focused on Wisconsin. For a team with obviously a lot of new guys, how important do you think like the first road trip is going to be? You know, you're playing in a different environment. I know it's a neutral court for everybody, but it's be a good bonding experience, right? Yeah, it's definitely going to be a good bonding experience. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. You know, West Virginia is a little close to home for me, so I'm pretty sure I have some family come out of support. But, you know, just as a team, we, we got to go on the road and just, you know, we're all we got. You know, we don't have any fans. Like, Nation isn't behind us, you know, getting loud. So that's where you really have to trust each other, and that's where you really build those bonds and those team chemistry right there. Darius, back to the 1,000-point mark. How proud are you that it occurred in a night uniform the, your entire career being a UCF Knight? I'm super excited about it. You know, I wouldn't want to play um, for anyone else or anywhere else. You know, Coach Doc has been great to me ever since I got here as a freshman. Uh, he's always trusted me. He's helped me, and I've grown every single year. And, you know, my accolades and stats can prove that. I know your focus obviously has been on Tennessee Tech, but Wisconsin, they've been a perennial tournament team. Any you guys know anything about the team you're facing on Friday night? Um, I've watched a little bit uh, of them. You know, uh, I think I watched who they played recently. No, 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 the one before that. Arizona, yeah, yeah. I, I watched a little bit of the Arizona game. Uh, I have to go back and watch that. Uh, I know one of the kids had 40 and shot a lot of free throws. I heard they were uh, a really good free throw shooting, uh, drawing, fr drawing fouls and percentage-wise. So, you know, I feel like that's probably going to be a big emphasis going into these next few practices and make sure we're guarding without fouling. One more question. Sound good? Uh, thank you, guys. Thanks, thank guys. You. Thank, thank you. you.